Welcome, I'm Ian Baker, and it is time to meet your new Coleman Rubicon. So I'm gonna go over some basics, just show you some operations so you can get out camping and having a good time. We'll start right up front with the Bastion Power Tongue Jack. The, this uh, unit is fairly simple to operate. You'll basically have two switches. One of the switches will be for the light. It'll simply say on or off. And obviously that's just for visibility at night. The other switch generally will say retract and extend, or it may say up and down. If you push extend, that will raise the trailer up as you are extending the tongue jack. Retract, of course, will do the exact opposite. You will use this for two different basic functions. One will be to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. You will also use this to level your trailer front to back. Remember when leveling, you wanna level side to side first with blocks underneath your tires. And then once you're leveled side to side, then you will level front to back. Right behind that will be your two 20 pound propane tanks with a cover. Uh, you can access those tanks by undoing these thumb screws and lifting it up. Generally, you do want the door in this orientation. In case you forget to close it, you're going down the road, the wind will close the door rather than rip it off. But for this, I'm actually going to remove it just to kind of show you. It's a little bit easier for camera purposes. And you can see your two 20 pound tanks right here. To remove one of these tanks to refill it, you're just going to undo this center one. Uh, you'll wanna turn this. And you can see if we start turning it here, it loosens up a little bit. And eventually, if we can get this wing, there we go, almost, there we go. So now you'll see it's nice and easy to spin. You will uh, unscrew this and that will allow this bar to lift off, which will allow you to take the tanks out. Once you have it filled up, you're gonna do the exact opposite and just tighten her right back down. Now, in between the two tanks, you'll see the selector switch, which is this guy right here. And you kind of have two different, uh, well, three different positions, I guess. So whatever it is pointing to is the tank you are drawing from. So if it's pointing this way, you're gonna be drawn from this tank, of course, vice versa uh, for this one. If you put it in the center, it will technically draw off both tanks. Some people like to do that. I personally don't, simply from the standpoint that once one tank is gone, I know I'm at 50% and I know the other one is full, right? So, you know, our 50% overall propane. One is empty, one is full, I'm good to go, I can refill. If you're drawing off both, if you're not a propane in the middle of the night, you're just out, right? Um, so it, for me, it's just better peace of mind to select one or the other, but by all means, if you do put it in the center, it will draw off both. Right behind that, of course, are your rails for your battery. That'll be located right here. Uh, we are just using a jump pack to power it currently. So we'll see some things aren't quite working, but that will supply, uh, your battery will supply 12 volt power. 12 volt will run a lot of things in your camper, like your tongue jack, your awning, uh, your lights inside, all of that will run off 12 volt. You will need 120, however, to run some of your other appliances. To get 120, you'll have to plug into shore power or have a generator, but you will need that for things like your AC unit, your microwave. Uh, this one has an inverter, so some of your 120 plugs will still run off 12 volt, but I'll show you where that is located in just a moment. Um, you'll also see the LED lights right here on the front. Those are controlled by a switch right here in your pass-through compartment. Now, the pass-through opens with what they call a 751 key. You're just gonna take that, turn it, and light it open right up. You'll also see it has a magnetic catch, so you can put it up there just like so. And that allows you access here into the pass-through. It will come with two different tools. Uh, one of them, the shorter one, will be a manual override for your power tongue jack. The longer one will be for your stabilizer jacks. Uh, for your stabilizer jacks, you're gonna turn clockwise to extend them and then counterclockwise to retract them. Couple things of note. One, it does have a pretty decent sized pad on here, but if you're in really soft ground, I recommend using a jack pad just to uh, further disperse the, um, the weight, right? You're gonna have a bigger area that's gonna disperse the weight over. Also, these are not used to level, folks. You, as I mentioned, you wanna use blocks under the tires to level. If you try to use your jacks, your stabilizer jacks to level things out, you are going to break them. You wanna make sure you are level side to side and front to back, then drop your stabilizer jacks down. Let's talk a little bit about solar on the Rubicon because you will see a couple different things. One, it does have a portable panel plug-in. So uh, if you want uh, extra solar, you can have it, but your Rubicon will come with 190 watts of solar plus an inverter, which you can see right in here. So your solar controller will be located right there. Because we don't have a battery hooked up, you can see it saying, hey, it is dead. So on the left will be your charge level. Uh, it'll kind of show you, you know, what state uh, you are in. 
whether it is going to be a bulk charge, whether you're in a float charge. Uh, and again, that kind of gives you the idea of this, the state of your battery. Uh, you also can select your battery type if you do change to like an AGM or anything like that. Then you can also cycle through um, some of your options to see your current voltage or how many, uh, you know, uh, the amount of power you've brought in for the day, things like that. Battery disconnect is located right above that, so you can quickly and easily kill all power to the RV just by flipping that. That'll cut off all of your 12 volt. This switch right here is for your LED lights on the front. And then that right there is that 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. So that will allow you to run uh, your 120, a few of your 120 plugs inside. Again, that will all be based upon the floor plan as far as which ones will operate. Some floor plans will also come with the uh, outside griddle right there. Uh, it has framework which will sit on the rail. So if it has a rail like this, that's where you can set it up at. There will be a propane quick connect underneath so you can quickly and easily plug that in. And then uh, somewhere on the outside, you should have an electrical outlet too. You'll see the 12 volt power awning. Um, the, just touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to go right back in. The Rubicon utilizes the LCI edge awning. Uh, it's a great functioning awning. Again, it has that LED light on there, very easy to use. The outside speakers will be controlled by the multimedia center, which I'll show you that when we go inside, as there are a couple different zones. For these steps, you will have the LCI solid steps. Again, very simple and easy to operate. To put them away, you're just going to fold them right up in the door. You want to make sure that uh, this guy is straight up and down, just like so, or you know, perpendicular to the ground, so that way, um, you know, you know that your steps are locked in place. To deploy the steps, you can turn this either way and that will allow it to drop down. Bear in mind that when you are putting the steps away, the steps are inside the RV. So if they're, if they're wet, if they're dirty, I do recommend just wiping those off real quick before you put them away. Also, when you deploy them, you'll see you have adjustable feet. You'll have a pin on both sides. You can pop that pin up and out. And then you can, uh, you know, once you pull it out, that will allow you to move the leg in and out wherever you want to. And then once you find the correct uh, length that you want, you can then take that pin, kind of work it back through, right? Just like so, put it in place. Now, when it is deployed, uh, obviously you want the legs to you know, sit flat, but also you have to watch this plate. You wanna make sure this plate isn't sitting up too high. If it's sitting up like this, <laughs> right? I mean, this is going to be definitely exaggerated, but if it's sitting up too high, what will happen is when you go to close the door, you're actually going to hit the bottom of your door. You're going to bend it. You're not going to be very happy. Another thing you will see is the foldable grab handle. This lifts up to turn. You'll want to do that during travel so it's not hanging out there. Once you get to your destination, again, just lift it up, pop it right back into place. Um, nothing too crazy on the back side. You do have the uh, rear mounted ladder so that way you can climb up onto the fully walkable roof if you have to. Uh, weight capacity on the ladder is 250 pounds so bear that in mind. Uh, and again, if you don't want to get up there, you know, for, for inspection, whatever it may be, just know that any Camping World location will do a free roof inspection for you. Does it no cost to you? Just bring it in. They'll get up there and let you know if anything has to be done, uh, touched up, resealed, uh, or, or anything else uh, maintenance-wise. Coming around to the off-camp side, a couple quick things over here as well. 30 amp detachable power cord on the Rubicon units. I'll show you where that power cord, uh, what that looks like. And usually people just uh, store that in the pass-through. Black tank flush is a great feature uh, that, that will, of course, help wash out the black tank. The one thing I do recommend is if you use this, uh, I actually not even recommend, you have to have that black tank valve open. Otherwise, you're going to fill up that black tank super fast and you're going to end up doing a lot of damage to the RV and you don't want to mess around with that. So when you wash out your black tank, make sure that black tank valve is open. Also with that, just talking about some black tank uh, kind of maintenance things. A lot of people do travel with a little bit of fresh water in their black tank, uh, just so it helps slosh around a little bit in there and it'll just help clean some of your sensors. So if that's something you wanna do, uh, again, you can do that just by filling it up in your toilet. Um, but as far as the flush goes, make sure the valve is open. The valves will be located right here. Gray handle for your gray tank valve, black handle for your black tank valve. And again, depending on the floor plan you're looking at, that termination of the valves may be located in a slightly different position than it is here. This particular one does have a slide out. I'll show you where that control is inside. Uh, your water heater should have a Dometic water heater. This one does run off both propane and electric. You can turn both of those on at the same time for a faster recovery, which is 
pretty stellar. Uh, the Dometic unit just has a plug. Uh, you can put a plug right on there, there, or a cap rather. There it is, cap, something like this. Um, you know, over time you may want to, it comes with a, a composite one like that. Over time you may want to use like a steel one just because sometimes, uh, you know, if you're using steel and plastic, it can get cross threaded, but that, you know, shouldn't be an issue until uh, way later down the road. And, and again, usually it's from misaligning threads, but you don't have to worry about an anode rod or anything on a Dometic. So it is pretty simple uh, on the maintenance side. Moving up a little bit further, fresh water inlet in case you don't have a city water connection wherever you're going camping, you'll obviously want to fill up your fresh water tank. If you have city water, that'll be located right down below. And the last thing I want to touch on before we go inside, as I mentioned, is just that power cord. You can see uh, that guy is right here. Pretty easy to tell. It's going to be a, a 30 amp because you will have three prongs on the male end. If it's a 50 amp, you will have four. You can also tell based upon the thickness of the cord. Now let's get to some of the main operation of the RV itself with the control panel. So uh, with the Rubicon, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You will see the, your tank monitoring panel uh, as well as your battery panel, right? You can click, just kind of see what you're looking at. Obviously all our tanks are empty as they should be. Uh, just bear in mind, depending on the floor plan, you may not have gray, uh, two gray tanks, but uh, again, some of, the, some of the floor plans might. Right next to that is your awning. Simply uh, kind of like our power tongue jack, right? One direction to extend the awning, the other to retract the awning. Uh, just make sure you don't overextend it. If you do, the awning will actually start to roll up backwards, and that can be a problem. It'll kind of create um, like a big pool for water, a bunch of other issues. So you want to make sure you don't overextend it. Uh, you will know, but basically, you know, like I said, once it fully extends and starts backing up, you've gone too far. Right down here a little bit is the water heater. As I mentioned outside, this current, uh, the Dometic unit does run off both gas and electric, and you can turn both of those on at the same time for faster recovery. Uh, now, when I say electric, I'm referring to 120 volt, not 12. So it will be propane and 120, assuming that you have 120. Uh, water pump right next to that, and then you'll have a couple switches for lights, interior and exterior, that will be for your awning. If it has a slide room, you'll also have a slide control. Rather than retract and extend, you see that one says in and out. Again, uh, mostly straightforward. Right above that, and again, it may be in a different location based upon floor plan, is the multimedia center. Um, you know, I'll turn that one on real quick. Power button, pretty simple. You have your volume controls. Wow. Someone, someone was jamming out in here, guys. Uh, sorry about that. But uh, there are your volume controls. As I mentioned, you do have a couple zones, uh, whether you want it inside or outside. And you can see, you know, if I um, uh, kind of click and hold for a second, it will turn that zone on or off. Uh, so that, again, lets you control the music both inside and out. Um, if you're looking for kind of some more in-depth information, uh, again, on how to use any of this stuff, folks, uh, we do have a library. I'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, but just know that, you know, we're, we're kind of going over some things quickly just to give you a basic understanding of usage. Um, let's go ahead and push the slide out. You will see that, uh, again, because this one does have the slide, you have the tri-fold sofa there. So again, I'm just going to push like so, and that one will go out. This one uses a cable driven slide. Um, very, very simple and easy to use system. You do want to, pretty much with any slide, folks, you want to make sure you have 12 volts on the battery. Uh, you can see that, you know, this one just stops when it's fully extended. So uh, very simple and easy to operate. And as you saw, uh, you know, again, depending on the floor plan, you may have uh, some space in here. Just make sure you do bring that slide in before you leave your campsite. I know pretty standard stuff, but you'd be shocked uh, what I've seen. You also see your hood, very simple and easy to operate. Of course, light and fan right there. Um, depending on the model, depending on your cooktop, this one has the Suburban 2 burner. Uh, again, this one, you're just going to go right over here to light. You'll use a match and that will light it up, assuming that you have uh, you know, propane in the tanks and the proper tank selected. Um, faucets, pretty self-explanatory lights. Um, the, the main lights will be with the switch, but just know that in the center, there is also a push button so you can turn the lights on and off. For the blinds, your kitchen blind will be a little bit separate. Uh, you know, and I'm sure you've seen this style. I think it's called a Venetian blind, but um, you know, super simple and easy to operate. As I said, I'm sure you've seen them a million times before. Uh, the rest of them will be roller shades. And so they will roll up just like so. You just kind of pull up and down. You'll also notice they have this little uh, pull cord, which is super helpful for when they are fully retracted. So you can kind of pull that out and stop it just like so. Uh, power tower, if, if some of the Rubicons will have power towers in different places. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push 
and that will let it pop up a little bit just like that and then you can pull it all the way up and you will see uh, 120 on there as well as a couple 12 volt USB ports to put that back down there's this little red button you're just going to push that and you'll see it will push itself back in and then again you're just going to click it right down in place depending on the sofa you know if it's a jackknife jackknife sofas like this one are super easy to operate you're just going to lift it up drop it down just like that uh, to put them away what i generally recommend because i've seen people struggle if you kind of lift up in the front and then reach around the back and you're going to pull the back towards you kind of like creating like a v like a scissor action and that will drop it down uh, again pretty um, pretty self-explanatory let's talk about heat and ac right a little bit of um control so roof mounted unit here um again very simple to operate you can see that you have a uh, thermostat on one side, depending on how cold you want it. On the other side, you can either run fan or uh, kick in the compressor there to get things a little bit cooler if you need to run actual AC. As I mentioned, uh, bear in mind, you will need 120 for that. And then you can close it off just like this uh, if, if you so choose to have it shoot out the side vents or you can open it back up and have it shoot out everywhere. Again, it just depends on what you want. For furnace, pretty easy too it's going to be right over here um, you can you know you have an on off selector right up top so you heard I just kicked it on maybe didn't but uh, so I just kicked it on they kick go like that to click it off and then on the bottom is uh, going to be your thermostat and uh, you know helps you control your heat take a look at the bathroom real quick nothing nothing super crazy in here folks um, you know for your your shower your hand wand will have a place. Uh, this is how it sits in the bracket right there. Hot and cold water. Uh, obviously, you know how to operate a sink. Nothing again. Nothing too crazy in a bathroom. The, the, the toilet, if you're new to RVing, the toilet may be a little bit different. It has a foot flush lever. Uh, the way that basically works is if you push and hold it just for a second, uh, in just a little bit, right? Like you just a little bit of pressure. That And I don't have water hooked up currently, but that will allow water to fill up the bowl. So... Um, if you need a little more water in the bowl, that's what you're going to do. And then to flush it, you're going to push it all the way down to the floor. And what you'll see is that just opens it up. And that's just a straight drop into a tank. RV toilets don't have a P-trap like uh, your, your residential toilets do. So, you know, when you flush that, if you smell a little bit of uh, sewer gas come up, completely normal. Because that, again, it's just a straight drop into the black tank. And then your refrigerator in the Rubicon will be a 12-volt refrigerator. Uh, so this does run off your batteries, which is super awesome in this unit because, again, you have that 190 watts of solar helping to pull in some energy, helping to continue to power this one. Um, you know, and again, a lot of people really like the 12-volt with that solar. It allows you to get out and do, uh, do some more camping, right? You don't have to rely on like a 12-volt power or a 120 power source or anything like that. So hopefully, folks, this kind of gives you a basic idea of a lot of the things uh, and how to operate them in a the Rubicon. This particular one has the fold-up table, too. Again, you know, most of the things in here are self-explanatory, but if you're new to RVing, there are a lot of things you just may not understand. Maybe you want to go a little more in-depth. You're having uh, some issues, right? You need some troubleshooting help on a water heater or furnace or an AC unit. Well, we do have all that information available in a vast library. Uh, and also, if you do get stuck and you need some additional help, we do have an elite service team that is standing by to help you out to make camping not only fun, but easy.